Rick Harsh, take two. What I'm going to do is read one or two excerpts a day from the all of the um, coronasamas.books, books, beginning with the first, which is um, Eddie Vegas, the Manifold Destiny of Eddie Vegas, and up to the twelfth, and. I'll read one or two a day, depending on, on how it goes, and just read an excerpt. Uh, this one here is uh, um, from the days of the, the, the mining boom in the, in the West. Our, our man has gone from Idaho to um, see what he can find. Um, and set up for the family and send for his wife. So most of this is actually a letter from him, and he's not a very literate man, but she taught him enough that he can write a letter of some sort. But it starts with him getting uh, held up on the trail. <clears throat> Reach for the sky, pilgrim. Truer words were never spoken, we know, for the letter to this day remains a family treasure kept safe in some locker in some Las Vegas Detective Bureau storeroom, and dated April 23, 1850, sent from Tom Gravel in California to his wife in Oregon, the first letter he sent after he was held up on the Siskiyou Trail. Letter begins, or I commence reading letter. I said, sir, I ain't no pilgrim, and I don't know why you suppose that, but looks to me like your intention is to rob a pilgrim or just anybody you can find, so you better make your intention more clear after you've gone around giving orders to stranger. Afore you given gone round giving orders to strangers. And he said, I says reach for the sky and shut your jabber hole. I said, I never done surrender yet. To no man on this earth, and I make out I can shoot a gun quick and straight like, and if he want, he can take the chance of killing me on his first shot, and soon as he got that look of constipation, I drew and shot the forearm of his gun carrying limb. That man was who you will come to know as Uncle Rance, Rance Hardup, former mayhaps outlaw by trade, bad luck roused about by nature. Anyways, you can see all that gun exercise paid off quicker than I hoped it need to. Leastwise, I shot a man with a gun at me, and not Hector or you or Roar or Feeble Jeff or even me. Ain't sure what I meant by that, except I weren't the feller got shot. Funny thing is this was after the first easy day on, on the tail, after all the troubles at first to find the north and south trail, getting lost twixt thar and the trail head and then. I mean, whence upon finding the trail head, sort of just south of Fort Vancouver, the trail from there is might hard on man, beast, and wheel. Hardly do you go one hour without finding some poor, poor soul's wreck. The skin teared off the skeleton, Still a skeleton, uh, still a skeleton unless the wood was no good in the building of it. I find myself happy not to know the circumstances of the hundred or more bad luck cases, leaving their lives behind them not fit for scavengers, which brings to my mind beasts like bears. They say the bear is all around here, and the big cats too, but the safest place is the trail. I think, because I hardled but saw a few deer and occasional critters off the trail up some creek I went to for peace now and again betimes. Long, lonesome night afore Rance and me met up, I got to thinking maybe too much, but what I see is them animals is smarter than us, in the forest way, in the nature way, and see this is what that makes me think that if we are critters of nature too, maybe we are long gone about it the wrong way round for the critters, and I mean the grizzlies and the li lions, they know something we do not, nor even can, so they stay clear for the 
trail. If Big Ass lived here and Hector was on this trail, he would never have been clawed up like that because they knows the trail is, well, something like poison to them. Do not think I am changing my mind or changing at all. You are my love, and I am always your Tom. But did we not study philosophy together under the stars, and I am just doing the same only by myself without your guidance, which I miss with all my blood and bones. For I am ever your Tom, and love you more than my own blood and bone, and I will mail this letter from the town of Portugal, where they told me at Diggins there was uh, steady mail runs. Sorry, no date, I don't know the date. It is summer by now, maybe, but snow all like a giant head of hair on the mountain rower told me I would see, and was he ever right? It takes a month to see the back of it once and for all. He called a stick a lick it. It's a, I had to remember it. I think I might have seen it once yesterday and today.